Well, hi, this is Randy Barnett with EC&M Ask. This is just a series of short Q&A videos uh, where you have specific questions out there that you've posted uh, on ECNN, uh, ECNM Magazine online. And um, then we get the subject matter experts together and we go through and we try and get you some answers. So anyway, I got uh, two questions to cover today then. One is, uh, this: if you got a week for this one, we can talk about it. It says, I don't understand the temperature limitations of 110.14. Well, let's just go over the general rules. So 110.14 is general requirements for electrical connections then. Now the temperature limitations, and, and most of that information is pretty self-explanatory. Just read the, read the information until you get to section C. So 110.14C is on temperature limitations. Well, we know that any chain is only as good as its weakest link, isn't it? So let me uh, look up a quick example for you. And we're gonna use, say, say I'm, uh, well, let's say I've got some number 12 THHN and it's going to a receptacle over here. So that number 12 THHN, if I were to look uh, in uh, 310.16, our ampacity table, it would tell me that number 12 THHN has an ampacity of what, 30 amps? So I can allow 30 amps of current flow through that THHN and not exceed the temperature rating at 90, de 90 degrees C uh, insulation rating if I started at the ambient temperature that it's rated for, okay? The problem is, so I can heat this conductor up to 90 degrees C, but then I connect it to some device like a receptacle or a switch. And the temperature limitation on that terminal screw is only 60 degrees C. Ugh, I got a problem. So even though I've got 30 amps of current flow through my wire, I'm gonna heat up, which is fine. I'm gonna heat up that terminal screw down to 90 degrees C and it's not rated for that. So what I have to do is I have to go back to the ampacity tables and I have to go down the 60 degrees C column. Now I'm gonna find that that, uh, uh, number 12 THHN is going to be limited to 20 amps of current flow on that particular device, see? And then I'm going to use what? Depending on what I'm doing, a 15 or 20 amp branch circuit or whatever. So I need to take a look at 110.14 and compare that to my ampacity tables. Now, how did I know that that device has only uh, 60 degree C terminals on it? Take a look in 110.14. It says that termination provisions of equipment for circuits rated 100 amps or less are marked 14 gauge through one AWG shall be used only for, and it says conductors rated at 60 degrees C. So uh, 100 amps or less, 14 through one gauge, 60 degrees C. Then it goes over and it's on the next column and it says uh, for equipment for, or excuse me, for circuits rated over 100 amps are marked with conductors larger than one AWG, 75 degrees C terminals. Also, you say, well, I'm going to a motor. Okay, well, it doesn't have a limitation there, whatever. Take a look at, it gives you the, uh, for the different types of motors, uh, B, C, and D, and so forth. It'll tell you uh, what the provisions are for the temperature limitations there. So anyway, 110.14C, and uh, oh, help me with grounding electrodes, somebody says, wow help you with grounding electrodes. So lots of information in the code. I'm not sure you want me to come out and drive some rods for you. I'm not sure, I don't wanna do that, okay? But uh, if we take a look at, uh, go to article 250, of course, on grounding and bonding, 250.52 is it that tells me the, um, gives me eight different things. Let me look that up real quick for you. 250. Dot Two fifty dot fifty two, okay, and it tells me what are the eight types of um, items that I can use for my grounding electrodes, and so it lists those. And of course, the ground rod is one of those. And then there's plates, there's uh, wire, you know, bare copper wire that I can use around, uh, bury it so far in the ground, and all that. So two fifty dot fifty two tells me what I can use for my grounding electrodes. Two fifty dot fifty three tells me how to install those, such as, for instance, the uh, 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 rod and uh, electrode has to be driven in, you know, be in contact with the earth for eight feet or more. And it talks about the 25 ohms 
of resistance and all that. So your key is go to 250.52 to tell you what you can use for a grounding electrode. And then if you need to know how to install it, go to 250.53 to tell you how to install it. Then there's lots of information on the overall grounding electrode system. So anyway, we're out of time today for our quick uh, ECNM ask section. So be sure and put some information, some questions into the comments on the various webinars and videos that you view and whatnot at ecmweb.com and we'll get back to you with our answers. Thanks, have a great day.